when you are working on a business problem many times you might have to execute the code in loop using for loop or while loop in python sometimes you might also have to put conditions so that you can do different set of operations on the data based on the conditions hi my name is rohit and in today's video we are going to cover for loop while loop along with if and else condition in python let's get started so in python when you are writing the conditions there are various operators which you can use so if you want to check whether two numbers or two values are equal you can use equal to equal to operator then if you want to check whether two values are not equal then you just have to use not equal to sign for that and similarly you have options to check whether two values are comparable so for example here if you want to check whether x is greater than y we can use this particular sign so like this there are various options which you can use when comparing a condition so without wasting much time in theory let's get into examples so here suppose we declare a number x and the value of it is 283 and another number y and the value of it is 410 and then if you want to compare whether these two numbers are like greater than each other right so if you want to compare whether x is greater than y so in that case we can write if else condition so here we are writing if x is greater than y then remember a colon over here then print x is greater than y then see the indentation here as well so within if else loop you should always use the right indentation okay here we are not starting the next statement immediately here we are keeping some space over here so let's try to run this then we are getting anything because x is not greater than y so that's why this would be false and this line won't get executed and then when we we would come to else and in else we don't have any condition so it would go ahead and print anything over here similarly you can write multiple if else loops as well so here we are again having same numbers but we are putting one more condition over here and for that we are using keyword elif so first of all python would check whether this condition is true if yes it would go ahead and execute this line and then it won't check the remaining conditions but if this condition is not true it would go to the next condition and check whether this one is true so here the condition that we have is x is equal to y is x equal to y no so this would be false as well and then python interpreter would go to the next condition and the next one is else so basically we don't have any condition over here so then whatever is there in the else would automatically get in executed so here y is greater than x so this line would get executed so like this you can use multiple conditions as well using if elif and else so in python like when you are writing any code right it might happen that based on the conditions you want to execute different lines of code or different sets of algorithms then based on that in those cases you can use if else conditions then in python when you want to check multiple conditions within the same line right then you can use and operator so in and operator for this condition to be true the both the conditions need to be true so this line would get executed only if this would return true and this would return true as well now let's check so is z greater than y so z is 532 and y is 228 yes so this would return true and then is y greater than x so y is 228 x is 136 so this would return true as well and then true and true the output would be true because for and both of them need to be true for the output to be true so this would return true and that's why we see here the next line within the condition this print statement got executed and we are able to see the output then you can also use brackets within the condition if you are using multiple conditions so this brackets would tell the interpreter that first execute this bracket and after that the overall condition so python interpreter would first execute this condition within the bracket and again for this output to be true we want the output of this overall condition to be true as well as this to be true in this case z is greater than y this is true then y is greater than x this is also true that's why this bracket output would be true 
and is z greater than x yes so this would also give true and for add condition as we are getting both the truths the line after it or the, all the lines within the if condition would get executed so here we have only print statement that's why this condition would get satisfied and we would get print statement output over here so like this you can use and statement to check multiple conditions when you want both multiple conditions to be true okay then and condition is useful you can do the same thing without putting the brackets as well the default order of execution in case of python in case of multiple conditions is from left to right okay so first this would be executed then this and then this so this is how the conditions are executed then in python you also have a or operator now for or operator it's exactly opposite of and operator so for and we wanted both the conditions to be true for overall output to be true but for or you want just one condition to be true so even if one of the conditions is true the output of or would be true so here even if this is true or this is true it's fine for or or even if both the conditions are true the output would be true so in cases where you want just one condition to be true and then want to go ahead and execute that particular loop or that particular code block then you can use or condition in python so here we are comparing again if z is greater than y now is z greater than y yes so this would return true or y is less than x y is 228 x is 136 so this would return false because y is not less than x but as it's a or condition the combination of true or false would be true and that's why the line within this block would get executed which is a print statement over here and would get it as the output then you can also combine or and and condition okay within the same line so here what we are saying we are having or condition within brackets so basically this bracket would return true if any of these two statements are true and then after that this overall condition would be true only if we get true from this bracket and then this condition needs to be true as well so it's z greater than equal to x yes z is greater than x so this would return true and this bracket is z greater than y yes it is so this would return true irrespective of this then the overall bracket would be true because we have a or condition over here and the line within the block would get executed which in this case both conditions are true so this is how you can also combine and and or, or operator within the same condition now let's get to the loop section so you might get a requirement where you want to execute a code on a list or on a set of data points right so that time you can use loop so here we are creating a list with the name student marks and in that list we are giving the marks scored by students 85 88 67 and so on now suppose we want to convert these marks in the range of 0 to 1 okay so what we can do is maybe we can just divide these marks by 100 because these are the marks scored out of 100 so this is how we can write a for loop for z in student marks then followed by a colon which is again very important so this value of z would be the value within the list so this for loop would go through the value within the list one by one so first time it would go to 85 and what we are printing here 85 divided by 100 which is 0.85 then it would go to 88 88 divided by 100 that would be 0.88 so so on this for loop would traverse over the list one by one and we would keep getting the outputs over here based on the conditions written within the for loop so this is how we are able to use loop to execute the logic on all the data points within the list then sometimes it might happen that you want to break the loop right you want to stop the execution of loop based on some condition now suppose you want to stop the execution of loop if you found a student who has scored 99 marks so here you can put a condition within for loop so here what, what we are doing we are just printing the value of z printing the original marks scored by student and after that we are checking if the marks or the z value over here is equal to equal to 99 then print loop broke at z is equal to so basically we are printing at which value of z the loop broke and after that we are using a break statement so what break statement would do is it would stop the execution of code within for loop so this for loop execution would stop here and your code would go to the next line 
so it won't go back to the for right it would go to the next line so here as we see here in for loop we kept on printing values from 85 88 8 65 again 88 till 99 but as soon as we arrived at 99 right we printed that value based on this and then we went to this condition because this was true for z equal to 99 and the loop broke so after 99 we don't see any values printed here because the loop broke and it didn't continue execution till the end of this list so this is how you can use the break statement if you want a condition where you want to stop the execution of loop then you might get a condition where you want to skip the execution loop of loop but you want to continue till the end okay so in that case you can use continue statement so here we are doing the same thing we are just checking the condition if z is equal to 99 then continue and after that we have a print statement so when the for loop execution starts here it will start from here 85 so it would come here is 85 equal to 99 no so it would go here and print the value of z which would be 85 so we would start printing the values 85 88 okay 67 65 88 and then we will come to 99 so when we come to 99 this would be true and we would go ahead and hit the continue statement so that would take the execution of loop again to the beginning of loop so we would again go back okay and we would continue from the value of z which which was there so we were at this position so next time we would go to 49 so that's why we are seeing the value of 49 printed here and we would continue till the end of loop which is till value 100 so this is how you can use continue statement if you want to skip the execution of loop for some conditions but want to ensure that the loop is executed for all the elements in the list so remember the difference between break and continue and how you can use it then in python you also have a range function again what range function does is if you provide it any integer value it would create the values in in that particular range now suppose we have a range function and to it we are providing value 10 okay then by default it would create values from 0 to 9 because it would always start from 0 if, if you have not given it a start number so range function it takes three inputs start number end number and increment size so if you give just one number it would be considered as the end number and it the by default it would start by 0 and by default the increment size would be 1 that's why we are getting the numbers from 0 to 9 printed over here if you just print the values that we are getting from a range function using for loop now suppose we want to start explicitly from 2 then to range we can say that okay the start number is 2 the end number is 11 and the increment size is 2 so every number would be incremented by 2 that's why when we print the values we are getting 2 after that 2 plus 2 4 then 6 then 8 up to 10 so we would get values till the end number minus 1 okay which would be 10 in this case then we can also write two for loops within each other so these are called as nested for loops now suppose you have the marks scored by student and in another list you have some number from 1 2 3 4 5 and then you want to write some logic where you want to multiply the marks scored by students by these numbers okay and you want to do it for every number okay so this this 85 you want to multiply by 1 then 2 by 3 and then by 4 and then by 5 so you can achieve this using nested for loop so we have a for loop here so for i in student marks so for every element in this list we want to execute this so what we are doing is for every element we are executing another for loop so when we come to 85 we would go to this for loop so here for j in number so j is what initially it would be 1 so we are getting 85 and 1 then in this loop would continue till we hit 5 right so we are getting 85 2 85 3 85 4 so like this we are just printing both the numbers over here and this would continue till 85 5 then this loop would end and we would go back here and would start again so here the next value is 88 so then we would come back here again for 88 whole loop would get executed so it would be then 88 1 88 2 88 3 and so on so this is how you can use two two for loops within one another okay and if you see here everything is getting printed printed till 100 right so even for 100 we are getting the, all the combinations 100 1 2 3 until 5
so this is how you can use nested for loops then always remember that within for loop you always have to write some code or some logic suppose i am just creating a for loop for x in student marks and then i then i leave it empty that would give me an error so in case you want to write this logic afterwards right but you want to keep this code you can just use a pass statement so pass statement would tell your interpreter that don't do anything don't execute anything just go to the next line of code so if you do this you won't get the error which you are getting over here okay now we are still getting the error why because we haven't declared the student marks variable now maybe let's try to declare that variable first so student marks is equal to say 1 comma 2 and now let's try to run this again so if you run this we won't get the error so this is how you can use the pass statement now in python you can also write a while loop so in while loop again you are able to execute the code for all the condition so here if you want to write the logic based on some condition right instead of executing the code for complete list right in that case you can prefer while loop but in this example maybe if you want to execute the while loop for whole list okay till the value of i is less than student marks length of student marks so the length of student marks so what's the length of student marks so to check the length of list right we can just use a len function so if you check len student marks the value that we are getting is 8 so this loop would keep on executing till the value of i is less than 8 so basically 7 so this loop would keep on executing till value of i is 7 so we are first initializing value of i to 0 and then we are saying till value of i is less than length of student marks keep on executing logic within the loop so what's the logic so we are first printing the student marks at that particular position so we are printing student marks at i 0 so at index 0 the value that we have is 85 so it would print the value 85 after that we are just printing the value of i which in this case is 0 so value of i 0 and after that we are just incrementing the value of i so we are saying i is equal to i plus 1 so this is how we are increasing value of i now from 0 to 1 again it would go back here it would check is 1 less than 8 yes then it would again execute these statements so this would continue till we hit 7 so after we hit 7 we would print value of i equal to 7 and then over here the value of i would get incremented to 8 and then we when we go back here is 8 less than 8 no 8 is not less than 8 it is equal to 8 so this would return false and then we would come out of the while loop so always remember you are putting a condition which would be satisfied at some point of time okay which would result in false at some point of time otherwise this would create a infinite loop which would just keep on executing right because we are never getting to the value where which would break this loop so this is how you can use a while loop for writing the loop statements within python that's it for today guys now go ahead and start practicing python code for loops and conditions If you face any issues let me know in the comments. Keep practicing Python and keep writing the code. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.